Hey, people here, back with Bunky. I'm going to go over my Sentinel builds with you now, and we're going to start off with something naughty. This is uh, my human Sentinel, which is an Incendry glitch build. <laughs> Why do I do it? Well, it's because this character is not particularly interesting otherwise. I mean, don't get me wrong, Warp and Throw is an incredibly powerful combination, okay? You can do some really deadly biotic explosions with those two because of the evolutions they have. Uh, it's just, the you know, the pacing of that kind of gameplay is going to be very steady, because uh, Warp doesn't fly out too quick. It's quite easily avoided by a lot of the enemies and uh, you can only affect one enemy at a time whereas the incendiary glitch you do far too much dot in very little time okay so um you, the pacing of the game just goes through the roof uh, with a build like this. Now this is how it works, okay guys, tech armor's gonna allow you uh, to essentially tank. Uh, go with uh, durability for your first evolution, take power damage for your next evolution, that's gonna increase the dot of uh, your warp attack, okay, and uh, that's basically the key element of the incendiary glitch, and then obviously take durability again for your final evolution, that's gonna give you a 50% damage reduction. For warp, warp is going to be the first ingredient in this concoction of death. Okay, guys, spec it the same way I always tell you to. Go with detonate, expose, and pierce. Uh, don't bother with throw, you're not going to need it. Uh, if anything, it's going to be counterproductive for you. Uh, for your alliance training, go with the weapon damage, uh, the power damage, and the weapon damage, okay? Because your Shinji rounds is going to do more damage if you have more weapon damage. And obviously, the power damage is going to buff up your warp stot again. And then for your fitness, take all the health and shields you can, uh, durability, shield recharge and fitness expert, and you're going to have that with a nice 50% damage reduction, and you'll be able to get stuck in with this guy, uh, which is going to allow us to rock the Riga Carbine. Okay, the Riga Carbine's got this immeasurable uh, rate of fire, okay, so it's just going to slap on and pile up those incendiary rounds nice and quick, which is exactly what we want uh, for this glitch, okay, guys? Um, you don't want it to be too heavy, though, okay, guys? You want to be getting warp out on every single target you see, so just go with the Shredder mod, and the high caliber barrel on your Riga. And, right, uh, I'm going to attempt to explain to you what the incendiary glitch is in the quickest and simplest way possible, or at least uh, that I can manage, okay? With incendiary rounds four, okay, you will do an additional 50% of, of your weapon damage, okay, after you shoot the target. So if you want to imagine that we're just shooting bullets for this for this moment, okay, you shoot a guy, it, uh, your bullet does this much damage, and then 50% of that will be added again, okay, by the incendiary rounds. And it will be applied over three seconds in six intervals, or six ticks, okay? So basically every one and a half seconds the enemy takes additional damage until it adds up to 50% of your weapon damage, okay? Now that's the mechanics of incendiary rounds and um, basically any power that works with a similar mechanic incendiary rounds will swallow up and by that I mean any other uh, dot attack that uh, d distributes its damage over six intervals okay and uh, fortunately that's going to work for <laughs> warp okay because that's what warp does and um, Essentially, uh, what happens when those two mix is that uh, the incendiary rounds takes the damage that warp would do adds it to its own and gets it all out in three seconds, okay? And um, but it's not just the damage, it's actually the um you know, the effects and the multipliers too, okay? So that additional damage to armor and barriers, that becomes an element of the incendiary rounds as well, okay, guys? And this just all piles up and just wrecks enemies because you're just doing far too much damage in such a short amount of time. Because uh, you, uh, you, uh, incendiary rounds will swallow up other incendiary rounds, okay, guys? So what you can do is you can warp a target. Don't forget that's a major debuff to start with, okay? Then you sh empty the clip into them. The incendiary rounds get slapped on. You do a crap ton of damage. Damage. It swallows up the warp's damage, makes it its own. Then you reload your gun, you can empty another clip in, okay? And then it'll swallow up that damage, and it'll all just fly out in about three seconds, and you will melt enemies in that time period. You'll literally see their health tick away in front of you, before your very eyes, guys. You can literally take out, with the right uh, um, application, you can take out a Platinum Praetorian in three seconds with the incendiary glitch. Okay, uh, so yeah, that's that's the magic. If you want more of the details, check out the video guy because I go into great depth on exactly what's going on with that um, with that little glitch. Okay, uh, for the rest of your equipment though, for your armor bonus, get on this psychonic modulator so that you can tank more efficiently. Get in there with your Riga, and then for your gear and weapon bonus, okay, guys, you want to be going with uh, where is it? Where is it? The shotgun amp. Okay, and of course the shotgun rail lamp, because again, that's going to buff up your weapon damage, and then 50% of that is what's going to be your incendiary rounds' damage. 
Okay, and that it's that simple, guys. You get your tech armor on, you run up to an enemy, you warp them, and you shoot them. Okay, it's really simple gameplay, but the damage is incredible. The next Sentinel then is the Turian Sentinel, another really simple um, character to play because because essentially he's just extremely versatile. Okay, he's um. He's a Turian, so he's got incredible weapon damage bonuses. And then he's got two powers, which will just let you deal with any kind of resistance the game throws at you. Okay, um, For his tech armor, just stick three points into that. That's going to get you a 35% damage reduction. And then... Um, for warp, I only go into uh, five ranks into this. I take the uh, the detonate and the expose, so I've got the debuff that I want. Uh, that's going to be enough to help me deal with armored targets. Because um, essentially, uh, you, re you you'll do fine with five ranks in warp, but you really want six ranks uh, of overload, and you really want to get in on all of those sort of damage, but uh, those weapon damage bonuses, as I mentioned earlier. So you know, with the overload, uh, spec it for chain overload, neural shock, and shield damage. Okay, and there you go. Now you've got everything to deal with the enemies okay guys you just uh, you overload shields and barriers and you warp armor and then you shoot and you shoot with your damage and stability uh, take power damage for your next one because that's obviously going to increase your power damage as well they're a very important aspect of what you're doing and then more damage and stability okay and you've got a 37.5 weapon damage bonus okay and then if you take full fitness okay go with durability shield recharge and fitness expert you've got yourself 950 health 1425 shields and 35 damage reduction so you're nice and tanky and then you can basically strip shields and shoot weaken armor and shoot it's that's the turian sentinel for you he's incredibly uh, versatile you can stick any weapon you want on him to be honest but i like to play on the uh, the stability bonuses that the turians get i'm going to put on the hurricane okay because this thing can stream out bullets and do a lot of damage very quickly uh put the high velocity bar on it because that'll let you uh, keep up and uh, uh, take out the armor but then you can stick on the power magnifier too then okay to really amp up your powers and just have everything flowing and gelling really nice uh, for your equipment, I recommend the warp rounds, okay, because um, that's that's definitely going to do in the armor, okay, guys, if you warp the armor first and then you shoot it with warp rounds four, okay, you're going to absolutely decimate it, but obviously warp rounds just does generally good damage, um, generally good damage in general, that was what I was about to say and I said it anyway, okay, guys, but yeah, it's good damage, you take down the shields and barriers, you shoot them with warp rounds, the enemy dies, it's nice and good. Um, put, take on a cyclonic modulator for him as well, okay, guys, it just increases tankiness because they don't have any evasive ability, so they're quite stiff a character. So you want to be quite nice and tanky. For his gear bonus, I recommend the expert package, okay, guys? Because obviously, um, tech armor slows down your power recharge, and your powers are very important. They're like your first line of attack before you start shooting. So, you know, this is going to allow you to stream them out a lot faster, and of course, you're going to get the SMG damage as well. And then uh, for your weapon bonus, like the SMG rail lamp, okay? And that's the Turian Sentinel. Now, the Krogan Sentinel's a character I don't play. Um, it's because he's, <laughs> he's essentially just the same as the Krogan soldier, okay? There's a lot of great ways to play him. Uh, you can have a great uh, weapons platform melee build or power build with these guys. Uh, if you treat um, Incinerate as your Inferno Grenades and Lift Grenades as your Carnage, okay, guys? You can go ahead and check out my Krogan soldier video guide and you can see how to... And then, you know, you can just obviously... Um, Specking incinerate like I always tell you to do it, and lift grenades as I'm about to tell you to do it, okay, guys? And uh, you can essentially just put in the, the same uh, points into the, you know, the appropriate areas. Obviously, you replace fortification for your tech armor, and you can put the build together yourselves, guys. It's really that simple. Um, but I'm going to give you a build for the Krogan Sentinel now that I would probably play if I bothered to build him at all, okay? Uh, again, the reason I don't do it is because it's something I'm, it's, it's nothing really new or unique for what I've got going on with my other characters. I'm going to, um, this is, it's a weapons platform build I do recommend for the best, uh, damage for this character. I'm going to jump back onto my, uh, Turian, um, Sentinel here, okay guys, so I can, uh, show you the tech armor build. Okay, for tech armor, just go with uh, durability, power damage, and durability. Okay, now we're we're already making him quite tanky. He's got a nice fifty percent damage reduction, and he's got that um, that power damage buff. Okay. Um, you're not going to bother with incinerate, guys. You're, just, you're not going to bother with it. I'm just going to jump over to... Uh, you're not going to need it, is what I mean. I'll explain why later. But I'm just going to jump over to my Asari Vanguard now to show you the lift grenades because she's the only other character in the game that has them. Uh, there's really only one way to build lift grenades. There's no uh, reason to go for the other evolutions. There really isn't. Okay, guys, just spec it for um, damage, 
max grenades and damage and radius. Okay, now you're going to have an incredibly powerful uh, and a grenade with an, with an amazing radius as well, guys. You're just going to be able to wipe out large groups of enemies with those bad boys. And now I'm going to jump over to my uh, Krogan soldier to show you the rest of the build. Like I said, you're not going to need incinerator, okay, guys, because this is going to be a weapons platform. Um, for your Krogan uh, Berserker, go with weapon damage, power damage, and weapon damage, okay, for obvious reasons. I just said a million times now it's going to be a weapons build, a uh, platform, sorry. But now, and also you're scoring the extra power damage because that's making your already deadly left grenades even deadlier. And if for rage, if you just spec for durability, shield recharge, and fitness expert, okay, you're going to have an incredibly tanky character, okay, guys. As soon as that tech armor goes on, not only are you going to be doing more power damage, but you're going to be incredibly difficult to take down. Um, right, now the reason uh, this is uh, going to be cool <laughs> is because uh, what I recommend uh, weapons-wise for this character, okay, uh, if you slap on the Venom Shotgun on this bad boy, okay, put that on him and uh, slap on the uh, Spare Thermal Clip and the High Caliber Barrel, that's the only mod you're really going to need for this gun. Okay, and what you can do then <laughs> is just uh, literally run up to enemies, uh, shoot, hit, charge shoot them all, okay? Uh, the Phenom Shotgun does amazing damage to shields and barriers, okay? So you're going to take out those shields, you're going to take out those barriers. Uh, with the equipment we're going to set, we're going to be rocking, okay, guys? You're going to set up a nice tech explosion, and then you can just bomb those group of enemies. Because remember, there's uh, the, you know, the uh, Phenom Shotgun's charge shot fires out this, uh, this uh, bullet that spreads into lots of little mini grenades, okay? That do a large air area of effect and hit multiple targets and then your lift grenade is going to just uh, hit them all as well and blow them all up okay guys it's absolutely going to destroy them um what's uh, it's an important thing as well that we're rocking with the venom shotgun because of its shield and barrier damage because the lift grenades can actually only detonate um primed targets if they don't if they can be lifted okay so if any target's got any kind of uh, protection if they've got shields or barriers or if they've got armor okay guys you can't detonate an explosion on them the target has to be liftable to detonate okay guys and with the venom shotgun you are going to just completely get through, you are going to wipe through all those shields and barriers hit multiple targets that your lift grenades can capitalize on and blow them all up okay guys you're just going to run around being that kind of wrecking ball with this obviously like i said though you can't you won't you can't take off armor and lift and lift an armor target, so you're going to need another gun to uh, wreck them up. So uh, go nuts, guys. Stick on the Cerberus, uh, Cerberus? A Cerberus uh, Harrier, okay? Put that on him. Just put on a uh, magazine upgrade and an extended barrel. Okay, guys, for, you know, just that, that, they're the best elements for you. And that's what you just whip out for your armor targets, okay? That you can reload, cancel the lift grenades, because you're still going to do really nice damage against those armor targets if you're not blowing them up, okay? And that combination is going to just do a lot of DPS and wreck all the bosses for you. Uh, what I also like about the Cerberus Harrier on this guy is the fact that um, it's got very little ammo. It needs you to get to the ammo boxes. So, you know, it's going to encourage you to hit those crates and you're going to keep your grenade count up, okay, guys? And uh, I think that's what's going to really gel really nicely for the character. Um, for his equipment, uh, I do recommend the incendiary rounds. Okay, guys, get the incendiary rounds on so you can get the fire explosions on the go. So literally, you're just going to shoot up all the uh, all the mooks with the venom shotgun. You're going to rip off their shields. You're going to set a load of them on fire. You're going to hit them with, the uh, with a lift grenade. Bang! They all blow up. It's great. Um, for your armor bonus, okay, guys, just go nuts. Um, and by go nuts, I mean put on a power amplifier, okay, guys? Yeah, th that build I've given you with full fitness on a Krogan, okay, guys? And that 50% damage reduction of tech hammer, you don't need any more shielding, okay, guys? You are a tank. Now you can put the power amplifier on and really do some damage with your lift grenades, okay? Uh, for the gear bonus, uh, lift grenades are going to be important, okay? You're literally, ev after every a shot you fight yeah i recommend you throw a grenade so uh, take the grenade capacity so you've got plenty of lift grenades on you and then um, the phantom shotgun is going to be a mainstay so go with the shotgun rail lamp okay and that's what i recommend for the krogan sentinel right let's go back to the class so i can show you my next guy okay the batarian sentinel some uh, the very reason i don't play the vulture hunter because this guy's uh, just too good <laughs> he's one of my favorite sentinels 
Now, um, for him, you can just slap three ranks into blade armor, because that's going to give you a nice 25 damage reduction. Okay, and with full fitness on this guy, you're going to be even better shoes than that uh, Turian Sentinel. Okay, guys, go with uh, durability, shield, recharge, and fitness experts. You've got 1,425 health and shields. Okay, guys, and then, of course, you've got that nice damage reduction. Okay, so you're going to be able to tank really nice with this guy. Shockwave, um, I recommend that you just go for the radius and the reach, okay? guys because this means you just cannot miss any targets on the field okay you're just gonna be able to hit anybody you see uh with shockwave and shockwave is going to be important because it's going to be detonating your submission net now submission net i recommend you uh, spec for damage damage and slow and electrical field or sorry just electric field electric field's the the, the fundamental part of this uh, power tree because what that does, okay, is that sets up tech bursts. Because uh, essentially, submission net is just a, a tech um, stasis, okay, guys. You you throw it, you f uh, latch it onto an enemy, and they f and they're stuck on that spot. Then for you to do what the hell you like with them. But uh, you know, if you take the electric field, they 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 get electrocuted and set up for a tech burst. But what's also great is the electric field actually sparks off onto uh, nearby enemies and uh, sets them up for tech bursts too. And it's great even once you've killed the target inside the submission net, it continues to zap other enemies and uh, you know th th you can just do some really nice damage with the first two evolutions okay going the damage and the damage and slow okay guys so some really nice dot and then you've got some tech explosions to pl pile on top with it and that's just that you what you go around wrecking the enemy with you just net them and shock them <laughs> shock wave them okay and you're just gonna be tech bursting all over the place as, and in that respect, okay, guys, go with the damage in capacity and power damage, and then take some weapon damage. You, oh, well, actually, it's damage and ammo, okay? That's something that's cool about the Batarians, is they get an extra ammo uh, bonuses as well as damage. And that's the build for the uh, Batarian Sentinel. The weapon I like to rock on him is the Talon, okay? Um, I go ahead and put on the heavy barrel on him, okay? Don't need piercing, because Shockwave can knock off... Um, a guardian shield out of the way so you can just get a nice clear headshot and finish him off nice and quick and then I can also slap on the power magnifier so I can really increase the damage I'm doing with my powers there um, why the talon? Um, uh <laughs> Uh, I well, apart from the fact that I can go with the power magnifier, it's just because it's really, uh, it's really cool. Okay, guys, it's a really nice lightweight uh, weapon that does a lot of damage. Okay, guys, so um, it allows me to spam my powers because like a blade armor, like tech armor, is going to slow down your power usage, and you really want to be sort of stringing out those powers to get those uh, combos on the go. Okay, guys, and that's what the talent is going to allow you to do at, while doing a lot of weapon damage at the same time. And that's really the truth behind that. Okay, guys, and um, there's nothing. You, it's like you don't really need it's not about the shield stripping abilities of it because we can get tech burst off super quick with this guy uh, and on the same note i do recommend that you go slap on the disruptor rounds to ensure that okay guys because then you can um any minute that catches you off by surprise you can just hit them with the talon okay guys you're going to strip off the shield you're going to set them up for tech burst you can shockwave them and that's going to keep them stunned because the batarians don't have any evasive moves either so it's nice to be able to stun enemies because uh, you don't want them um, getting too close to you because if you get surrounded with one of those uh, not, uh, characters you are in trouble. Uh, he's tanky, okay, guys, just because of the full fitness and that uh, damage reduction, okay, so you can just treat yourself to a power amplifier. And uh, for his gear bonus, um, I go with the commando package on him, that's going to up my uh, shockwave damage and obviously give me some pistol damage as well, okay, and uh, then I just go with the pistol rail lamp for him. And that's the Batarian. Uh, okay, now we've got the Vorture Sentinel. Uh, the Vorture Sentinel is just uh, the fire explosion king of the game. <laughs> he really is. Um, spec in this way, okay, guys. Bloodless, go with uh, health regeneration, power damage, health regeneration. Uh, essentially, this is just going to allow you to just um, do more damage and stay healthier the more you kill, and you will be able to kill very efficiently with this guy. Just because you've got Bloodless, spec that way, okay, guys. You can just afford to only put three ranks into your fitness if you're ever if you're ever near death guys just escape the line of sight of the enemies and your health will regenerate in a flash okay guys um for flamer go with re 
reach, okay, guys, because you don't want to be really getting stuck in with this guy. Reach is going to give you a 15 meter radius. You can just tap loads of enemies from a nice safe distance because you're not actually a tank, okay, guys. You just got great survivability. And then for the rest, you just want to go with the damage and the burning damage, okay, guys. So that's going to just wreck up the place. Then you've got cluster grenades, okay, guys. I expect cluster grenades for force and damage, max grenades, and shrapnel, okay. And because flamer, you can just get flamer out and just wave it around a group of enemies, uh, set them all on fire. And then you can throw the cluster grenade in and set off three fire explosions at a time and yes that's incredible damage as you can imagine especially when you go for the damage in capacity and the power damage in his vulture resilience then and that's the vulture hunter build uh, i'd also like to go with the uh, riga carbine on this guy as well uh, okay because um obviously i'm just doing a ton of armor damage with all that fiery goodness there okay and the biotic cluster grenades too okay so the riga carbine is really going to make short work of shields and barriers as well uh, i go nuts with the piercing on this okay so i can just melt uh, armor targets as well because that's essentially what you can do with the riga as well you can just uh, you can just uh, stream the flamer out until that's done its course and then you can stream out the riga and by the time that's finished you can just switch to your flamer again that's going to start re that'll reload automatically if you hit flamer the moment you empty the clip and that's it you can just stream out damage with those two okay doing that so it's good to just go with the shredder mod and the high velocity barrel <laughs> so that uh, you can just wreck armor just as efficiently with your riga as you can with your flamer um, for your equipment, um, I like to go with the incendiary rounds on him, guys, okay, because then it all just gels together, and, like the incendiary glitch I, I explained earlier, okay, guys, it all mashes together and does incredible damage. Uh, for the armor bonus, and not to mention, uh, it's like when my uh, my flame is on recharge, okay, I, and I can shoot them with the Riga and then throw a crystal grenade and still get the fire explosions on the go. Um, but back, sorry, uh, armor bonus, put on the power amplifier, okay, because he does incredible power damage, okay, guys? So uh, really amp it up as much as you can. Cluster grenades are going to be used for pretty much everything you hit, okay, so you want plenty of them. Put on a grenade capacity for him. And then your weapon bonus is obviously going to be a shotgun rail amp. And that's your Vulture Sentinel. Okay then, who's next? Okay, this is my favourite Sentinel. This is the N7 Paladin. He is a badass. I love this guy. I love to just uh, jump into the thick of it and smash up the place with this guy. I don't go around... Uh, I don't make him a power build, okay? I don't go around uh, just doing it for the, da uh, the power combos, which you can do. You can really string a lot of power combos with this guy, but no, I just prefer to get in, uh, get stuck in and uh, just battle the enemies because he's uh, like like the Turian Sentinel he's incredibly versatile I spec energy drain for radius uh, drain and armor boost okay guys and that's going to be my main bread and butter okay guys every enemy I'm just going to do energy drain and shoot okay it's going to make it's going to keep me nice and healthy and it's going to give me a nice 40% damage reduction allowing me to get really stuck in there uh, then I skip incinerate and go for snap freeze okay this is my uh, armor uh, debuffer I just go with uh, the reach the cryo explosion and then go with the damage and weakness okay don't bother the tech combo it doesn't work uh, well it, it does work but not with that evolution okay guys that will do nothing for you you actually get tech combo in effect as soon as you spec for reach on the n7 paladin okay guys so if you put uh, if you put six points into tech combo afterwards okay you are just throwing them away and you want reach guys because that's another 15 meter ra 15 meters radius attack okay guys you're going to hit everything on screen and but uh, damage and weakness is going to basically just going to allow you to uh, completely weaken armor and destroy it okay guys so as soon as uh, literally uh, energy drain for everything else but as soon as armor re rears his ugly head you snap freeze and shoot it uh for the n7 paladin okay just to really buff up what we're doing with our powers i go with the damaging capacity and power Power damage, okay, because they don't hit particularly hard, but they can if you do it if you spec for those, and then you can take the weapon damage because okay, that's what's going to finish off the enemy. And then for the shield mastery, okay, guys, I go with the durability and shield recharge, okay, because I really don't care for the heavy melee of his uh, shield because um, really you're always going to be better off just taking cover like every other character does, okay, guys. It's um. <laughs> it, it, it's just not worth it, okay, guys? It, it can be kind of funky to whip it out if you've got no cover around you and you can block that Banshee warp ball or that Atlas missile just at the right time. But literally, if there's a cover around, just take that, okay, for your protection. Uh, but then I like to go with the Cryo Shield, okay, guys? The Cryo Shield, I can basically snap freeze and then melee because uh, the melee on this guy is amazing, the light melee. Uh, <laughs> you can just basically, I can snap freeze and light melee armor, okay, guys? And that's just going to uh, really debuff the crap out of it so that when I start emptying it into it with my gun, it's going 
going to die really quick. And what I also love about the Cryo Shield is it's the only thing that freezes Phantom solid in the game. So that's great. I can energy drain a Phantom, take off her barrier, melee her, and then she flies off solid, and then I just gun her dead, okay? And that's what you can do with all the mooks, essentially, guys. If you, you know, if you, uh, if you uh, run in with your energy drain and shoot combo and anything survives, you can just bash them away and that's then done, okay? The light melee is fantastic on this guy. You can really just get stuck in and wreck up the place of this guy. I love him for that. And because um, I'm getting stuck in with this guy, I got some nice survivability and I'm really versatile. I like to go with a shotgun with a nice rate of fire, go with the piranha. I slap on the smart choke and the high velocity barrel. That's going to get the job done, okay, guys? Uh, for his equipment, I like to go with the armor piercing round, so I'm doing some really nice weapon damage. Uh, then for his armor bonus, I like the cyclonic modulator, so I can really get stuck in with him, as I've been saying multiple times now. Um, for his gear bonus, um, God, I'm trying to remember. I th shit. <laughs> I, I, I drew on a blank there. No, I think I go with the Omni Capacitors on this guy, okay? Because obviously I got the weighty mods on my Piranha Shotgun then, so I just think I can hopefully get my energy drain and my Snap Freeze going out for, uh, nice and quick, and obviously there's a nice damage boost to them. And then obviously I just want this Shotgun Rail Lamp then for the damage. Drew a little bit of a blank then, but I'm pretty sure that's my game plan with him uh, all of the time. Uh, okay, now we got the little uh, Volus Mercenary. Uh, which you guys talked me into playing with, and I thank you for it, okay? This guy turned out to be a lot more fun than I expected him to. Because he's just got pets, uh, he's got really no um, attack apart from what gun you stick on him, so I thought he'd be a really um, shallow character, okay? Essentially, I would just be playing with the gun and uh, nothing uh, particularly special. But no, it turns out because of the Volus's ability to just cloak all the time with their light melee, his, uh, the pets on this guy are a damn sight better than the pets on anybody else, because the enemy don't see you, they just see the pets so they actually go for them and now you can really uh, make a better use of them Decoy, as I said with my Salarian Engineer, okay, is pretty dead to you evolution wise, just put the three ranks into it, okay, and you can use that to um, eat up uh, sort of incoming projectiles like Banshee Warples and Atlas Missiles um, but the combat drone is going to be the main thing, okay guys, I expect this the same as I do with my Human Engineer okay guys, go with Detonate uh, Shock and Chain Lightning this is just basically going to have your combat drone rush the enemy and uh, just shock them all the time which is great for crowd control so that you can just empty into them with your gun but what's great is that they're not going to see you while you're doing that okay so they're going to try and blow up your uh, combat drone and while you're emptying them to them with your gun, if you've got a nice elemental ammo, as soon as they take out your combat drone, it explodes in their face and detonates your ammo. And then you get a nice combo explosion in, okay? And you do a lot of great damage with this guy. Uh, every uh, focus, as I keep saying, needs shield boost, okay, guys? Go with shields, regeneration, and protection, okay, guys? So if you ever take a nasty hit, just lose the enemy's uh, uh, line of sight, cloak for a bit, shield boost, and then you're back in the game, okay, guys? Now, for the focus mercenary, you really want all the weapon bonuses on this guy go with the weapon damage um he obviously hasn't got headshots but he has got shield boost okay guys so he his shield boost is really good okay so if you if you are close to death you can step off and become very healthy with him but then you obviously want more weapon damage in the end and uh, then you can get all the fitness that you uh, you can get after that you can go with uh, durability and shield recharge this is excellent too because obviously with the way i got shield boost spec it increases the uh, the recharge speed of my shield and now i've also got shield recharge and fitness so uh, basically he's even less reliant on shield boost than the other voluses that I ha I've shown you before. So yeah, he's a really great little weapons platform, actually. Uh, the weapon for the job is the particle rifle. Okay, guys, you want to stick on the magazine upgrade and the high-velocity barrel. And um, like I said, okay, guys, you cloak, you send out your drone, and then you empty the uh, particle rifle into the enemy and then watch them become the, their own demise. All right, guys, stick on uh, incendiary rounds for your ammo. Okay, guys, so you're just going to be setting up fire explosions all over the place. Uh, for your armor bonus, uh, go with the power efficiency so you can get your... Because, obviously, the Folises uh, aren't, uh, do not have a great capacity at all, the little uh, guys. And we're sticking on the high-velocity barrel, okay? So it's a very heavy particle rifle we're giving to this poor little fella. Give him the power efficiency module so he can get the combat drone out all the time because it is a major part of his damage output. Uh, for the gear bonus, uh, just go with the assault rifle rail lamp. Oh, sorry, just the Assault Rifle Amp for your gear bonus and the Assault Rifle Rail Amp for your weapons bonus, okay, guys? And uh, that's the Volus Mercenary. Uh, okay, now the Asari Valkyrie. Okay, I don't play her like the Fury because I have a Fury, 
<laughs> okay, this is actually a really cool weapons build I have of her. It doesn't make use of warp, literally, so that I don't um, start just doing combo explosions all over the place. Okay, this is about getting stuck in and doing some real weapon damage to the character. You can do some wicked weapon damage to this character. Tech armor is going to allow you to tank. Okay, guys, go with uh, durability, power damage, and durability. Okay, the power damage is going to let your annihilation field do some extra damage, which is always nice because annihilation field you absolutely want. Okay, guys, go with. Uh, the impact radius, uh, the damage taken, and the drain. Okay, and that's going to be great then, because now you you're really uh, surprisingly tanky for an Asari with this character, because obviously you've got the tech armor, it's fifty percent damage reduction. But then you're also getting in with the annihilation field at the same time, which is draining the shields of the enemy. Okay, so that's really great for your survival. But also at the same time, you're going to be debuffing the enemy. Okay, so that your weapon damage is going to be incredible. Uh, for your Asari Falkyrie, if you just go with the weapon damage, headshots, and weapon damage, you're going to ensure that. And obviously for your fitness, you want all health and shields go durability shield recharge and fitness expert so you can tank now we can get him really close and debuff the enemy and set them up for a biotic explosion now i know i said i'm not going around doing biotic explosions but setting them up is still going to be very important uh for this character i go i love to play with the uh, the at12 radar on her stick the uh, smart choke on it and the high velocity barrel now the the radar has the potential to do more damage than the claymore in its two shots its biggest drawback is that it has a very short range on it okay because uh, it, it it just bounces after it shoots so that is you know that second shot that really puts it a give give it's its edge over the claymore those shots go all over the place so you really want to be as close as you possible to do the most damage of the radar and you w with this character you want to be as close as possible so you can get annihilation field in the works now, the, if you stick on uh, warp rounds for your ammo bonus, okay, you're going to be doing double damage with your raider, okay. So now you, you picture the scenario, guys, okay. You're do, you've got all those weapon bonuses, okay, guys. You've got the debuff from uh, the annihilation field, okay. Yeah, it, you've got um, the raider that does more damage than the claymore, okay. And uh, and then you also and then you're doubling that damage of the warp rounds, okay. That's why it all gels really nice, okay. And we're really tanky and we've got some great survivability, so we can afford to get. Started stuck in like that and really capitalize on all of it and let's not forget at close range shotguns get a damage bonus as well okay guys so you do just get stuck in and do a crap ton of damage with this character you can really uh fuck up everything with this combination i do love it for that it's a nice interesting uh, and different way to play with annihilation field and i think a lot of people should uh, try it out because um you know the n7 fury still a great character there's no need to have two people do the same thing <laughs> although you know i will put my hands up and fully admit that the uh, sorry valkyrie is better at doing that than she is but still you can have fun this way stick on the cyclonic modulator okay so she is tanky as hell uh go with a shotgun amp for your gear bonus and then go for a shotgun rail amp for your weapon bonus okay guys and really just get stuck in and do a crap ton of damage with her uh, okay, and then finally we got the Krogan Warlord. <laughs> I've had an up and down with this guy. I remember when he, when I first got my hands on him, I thought he was a really kind of clumsy character. I thought he was a poorly thought out, and uh, I uh, really took a disliking to him. But um, I have to say, at this point in my Mass Effect career, I do like the character. He's a lot of fun. Um, what the problem? What you need to be understand with him is that he requires uh, a lot more careful tactics than he would have you believe. Okay, uh, you know he he promotes this wild, crazy run in and hammer all the things kind of uh, game style. But if you do that, you're going to get yourself killed. Okay, guys, the, his melee attack is incredible, but it really needs to be your final attack. Okay, you literally your melee attack needs to be the last thing that happens to the enemy. Because if that if you don't kill the enemy with your melee attack, you're in a very dangerous position with this character okay he um He's, he's even clunkier than your typical Krogan, because no Krogan's got any evasive abilities. But this guy, um, as well, is a massive. He is huge. He's juggernaut size. Okay, so he's a really big target for the enemy to shoot. But then he can't. He also can't go into cover, and he can't jump over cover or all any of that stuff. So he really, he is uh, very, very stiff and clumsy. So you really, if you're going to go in for that melee, you need to make sure that it's the killing blow. Now the build is uh, quite uh, is this. Okay, guys, uh, durability and melee damage. Okay, 
So yeah, you got a nice damage reduction there, and obviously you're buffing up your melee attack. The biotic hammer is your your powerhouse. Okay, guys, go with the, the damage and force, the armor damage, and then the number of charges. Okay, that's what you're gonna, you're basically going to slap that on to take out uh, the bosses. Okay, guys, you you're going to uh, whittle down the bosses down to one good biotic hammer strike, which is which is a lot of their health for the most part. Okay, guys, you can literally if a brute has uh, is got like seventy five percent of his health, biotic hammer will kill him. If a banshee's on on like 50% of her health, Biotic Hammer will kill her. Praetorians, if they're on about 25% of their health, Biotic Hammer is going to kill them, okay? It's, it's, it's a good final blow. The Electrical Hammer is going to deal with everything else, okay? Because the, the Biotic Hammer hits one target really hard, whereas the Electrical Hammer has a nice air effect that hits multiple tam targets uh, quite, uh, you know, does decent damage. Spec it for shields and barriers, uh, fire damage, okay? And number of charges. The fire damage is what I recommend for this one, because if they do survive the, the melee attack, the, the damage over time is probably going to finish them off. Uh, for the Krogan Warlord, put in uh, three ranks. Okay, guys, this is actually going to work out better for you than uh, going for that last rank in uh, tech armor. Because what if you did take, if you did fully spec out tech armor, I'd recommend that you go for the power recharge, but you're actually going to get a faster recharge just by getting those three ranks because that's going to increase your capacity on this character. And obviously, it's going to buff up your weapon damage and your power damage so that everything that you, else you need is going to be stronger as well. So that's what I recommend for that. And then for your Krogan Warlord, what I recommend for him is going with the melee damage. Uh, the martial artist and then the fitness expert which is a little bit uh, opposite to what I do with all the other Krogans this is because you don't need one melee attack to go into pure rage okay two melee attacks which is his default one is all you're going to need to just really just easily stay in his pure rage okay guys but with that fitness expert uh, look what you get with it okay not only do you get that 30% increase but you get a 5% uh, um, damage protection uh, and a 60% um, health regeneration while you're in uh, rage mode okay guys so you, you really are just an incredible tank with fitness expert on this guy and then you've got really great uh, melee bonuses as, as usual with him <clears throat> right um sorry I, I i did just sort of zone out there let's jump onto the weapons and the riga carbine is what i recommend for this guy okay guys because um the riga carbine just is just an incredible uh, damaging gun uh, at close ranges, okay, and that's where you're going to be with a melee character. Stick on the Shredder mod for piercing, okay, guys, and obviously you want the Omni Blade then for the incredible melee damage increase. And uh, the on the Riga Carbine is going to be a very big part of it, okay. It's um, you really, um, as I stressed at the beginning, okay, guys, you really don't want to be using that that hammer strike until it's the killing blow. So until then, you just want to be uh, doing all the damage with the Riga Carbine, and the Riga Carbine is going to allow you to do a lot of damage, uh, especially if you go with uh, incendiary rounds for your ammo bonus. Okay, guys, this is going to let you set up fire explosions as well, so that your, your biotic hammer is going to be even more efficient when you're dealing with those bosses that can sink kill you. Okay, guys, because you obviously you've got the incredible hit, and then you're setting off a fire explosion as well. Okay, so you can really wreck them up. So you're final blow uh, can come in a lot sooner than you expect it to okay guys but literally get those get th those bars down and then finish them off with the biotic hammer because the Riga Carbine is going to allow you to get those bars down very quickly. It really is. Your armor bonus, get on a Cyclonic Modulator so you can tank. I've told you this guy's very clumsy and clunky, so you need all the tankage you can get. Um, for his uh, gear, go with the uh, Juggernaut Shields, okay, for the melee increase and the shield strength again. And of course, for his weapon bonus, you definitely want a Strength Enhancer. And uh, that's all my Sentinels, okay? I will be... Back with my infiltrators next, okay guys? Hope these are helping you out, and I look forward to your comments. Take care now. Bye-bye.